In this tutorial we're just going to go over Markovnikov Markovnikov edition and Sersef rule. And this is a guy, Vladimir Markovnikov. I put the names up in Russian though, simply because you, sometimes you'll come across his, these names and they'll be spelt slightly different, like Sersef can start with a Z and uh, Markovnikov can have F's instead of V's. So the, the Russian um, way of writing this is Markovnikov and here we have this funny character here, which is pronounced Z, so that's Sersef, and this is Tz. But I won't go into the, the way you pronounce Russian characters, just really just wanted to illustrate you can get these uh, these uh, names spelt slightly differently, but the pronunciation should be the same, really. So what Mark Arbenikov discovered was that when you add something like hydrogen bromide or hydrogen chloride across hydrogen chloride across a double bond then the pre predominant molecule that you get out will be with bromine on this in this particular example bromine will be on this carbon here and not this carbon so why is that well hopefully I can explain that now if we if we look at hydrogen bromine hydrogen bromide sorry and we just draw I, an orbital around there. I'll just get, choose a different colour, choose red. Now you don't need to worry about orbitals. I'm basically just trying to explain. Oh, bromine is pretty big. So we look at that. The electrons will spend most of their time in this bond around bromine. Now you don't need to look at orbitals or silly shapes like this. If you know something about electronegativity, so electronegativity of bromine is 2.74 and in hydrogen it's 2.2 basically this is more electronegative than this element so it can draw and attract electrons in this bond towards itself now I'll just delete these things now why did I mention that well basically because this gives this proton a slightly positive charge and this bromine a slightly negative charge now that character there, if you've never seen it before, is called delta. It's just a Greek letter. And you, you draw it like that. And just means a little bit in this case. So it's a little bit positive, and this is a little bit negative. Overall, it's neutral, meaning it doesn't have any charge, really. Okay, but this is slightly positive, and this is slightly negative. Now, I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just trying to, hopefully, explain now why you get that structure. So this is a CH3 here, this is a double bond. I'll draw the hydrogens in. This is a double bond. So this double bond has got lots of electrons. It's got basically an excess of electrons, doesn't know what to do with it. So what it does, it will react with anything that's slightly positive like this. And this proton, because it's positively called acidic in this case, just like you have the word acid, it's acidic. It just means it's got a lot of uh, H+. Plus. So an acid is just H+, plus really, floating around. So this is quite acidic. So these electrons from this double bond come out of the, from being shared between those two carbons. And this is called a curly arrow, if you've never seen one of these before. So that, I'm just going to draw here, carbon, just to make sure that these centres here that I draw actually are carbons and I just sometimes I'll miss them out. If you want to have a look at a tutorial on drawing organic structures, this will explain all the different ways of drawing structures. So basically, these electrons leave this double bond and will attack the more positive. Because remember, electrons are negatively charged, so they'll be attracted to the positive charge around the hydrogen atom. Now as it does that, it's going to leave a positive charge here because the electrons are travelling. That, that curly arrow means the electrons have moved from wherever this is, from point A to point B. So it will leave a positive charge, so A becomes positive and B will become negative. Okay, so that's what that means. 
the electrons are moving away from these two carbons and attacking there. Okay, I won't go into too much detail of that either. Now we've got to decide where that positive charge is going to rest. So if I just draw two alternative structures and we'll have a look at them both. This one here This one here has now picked up a hydrogen, and I'll do it like that, and left a positive charge on this carbon. So that's a carbon there. Remember that's a carbon, that's a carbon there as well. Now this one, if it does it the other way around, will pick up a pro uh, hydrogen. Sometimes, by the way, if I call hydrogens protons, that's because I do a lot of NMR spectroscopy and it's a bit of a habit really. So in this case here it leaves a positive charge on this hydrogen. Now what I'll do to make it a little bit clearer is I'll just highlight that as green and then and we can see where the hydrogen is going. Okay, change my brush back. Okay, so in this case, this hydrogen has gone on here. Why is that good? But now we've got a positive charge on this carbon here, and this one is on this carbon here. Now, where the understanding of the organic reaction comes in is by uh, try and choose a different colour pen here looking at how that positive charge is stabilized and basically stabilizing is just like stabilizers on your bike you know it's got to be allowed to survive if you will um, before it collapses back into something else and if we just put the arrows in here and I'll explain what they are in a second this positive charge has got two carbon atoms there's a carbon there remember and this carbon atom here, these C these hydrogens are attached to this carbon. These should be on the other side, really. And that pushes electrons from the carbon orbitals into this positive charge. And remember, the positive charge likes negative electrons, so this has got two pushing in. And it's got to come from a carbon, remember. Now this one here has only got one carbon pushing in, because this one can't push in because it's too far away and this has just got hydrogens. So this has got one stabilizing group and this has got two stabilizing groups. And that is kind of the way these uh, reactions are stabilized and that's how and why you get the products you do. Because if we, if I just draw bromine in this color now, this bromide anion, an anion is a negative charged Iron will then come in, here's the little curly arrow, attack there, and that will give, I'll draw the final product in black, and that will give this, because this is more stable, so this is the one that will be around, and will give this final product, which is the one that Markovnikov observed. And it's all to do with stabilizing this uh, carbor cation. So carbor cation. Okay? Or carbonium ion sometimes it's called. Okay? So in this one it's not as stable and that will give you the other product. And that is the reason why Markovnikov's adi uh, Markovnikov addition works. Now sometimes you might come across anti-Markovnikov addition, which is by definition where you get the other product, this product. Now you find that the reaction mechanism doesn't quite go like this. 
it doesn't have positive charge species flying around but I won't go into that, I'll save that for another tutorial and I will look at SATESAF uh, rule in a second and SATESAF rule is basically the op opposite of Markovnikov edition but first of all I just need to clear some space Actually, I'll leave that up there you can see what Mark Ovnikov did. Now, if we look at SATESAF rule, SATESAF basically, this is a good example actually. I'll drag this on. So, as you can see, here we started, here we started with a double bond added across it, and we got bromine in a specific place on the molecule. In SATESAF rule, it's the opposite. It's basically, you can lose hydrogen bromide. To give a number of different products. Now it's just exactly the same kind of principles. If this comes off here, I'll just draw that in red. So if we lose the bromine, that's my little curly arrow, and that's come from that bond there. What would that give us? Well, if I draw this down here, that will leave in this case. Now I'm going to have to draw, actually I'm going to have to draw that better on it. I'll just get rid of them for now. I'm just going to draw the structures properly because I, I realise that some people might not know what this kind of structure is. So if I draw it like this, that's CH3, C, CH3, BR, that's a C. CH2, CH2, CH3. That is basically that structure there. Now I'll just shrink that down a little bit. I'm just going to move this over here as well because it's not quite where it should be. Okay, so that's our structure here. And what's happening is, I just draw a curly arrow here. What's happening is this bromine is leaving. It's taking the electrons away with it. So that's what that direction arrow means. Remember, in, early in this tutorial, I mentioned where the electrons go is indicated by the arrow head, and this is where they started. So the electrons are going on to bromine in this bond. So both electrons go to bromine. So that will leave behind. Like carbo cation again. I'll draw CH3 that. C, CH3. Okay, and that's positively charged. Now we apply that little system again, so this is quite stable. One of we count how many carbons are pushing in electron density if you will into that there's three so that's really good that's the maximum number of carbons you can have around a carbocation remember it's lost a bond so so that's really good so I'll just get rid of them but that's that means that's quite stable so it's going to lie that but now if it wants to make a double bond it's got to lose one of the hydrogens so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change these and put the hydrogens back in. So if I draw that's CH2 but leave the hydrogen out. Same with that, that's CH2 and leave that hydrogen out. And this one's alright, so I'll just leave hydrogen out. So it's still got CH2, but I've just drawn it a little bit differently. Now it's got a number of ways of losing a hydrogen to form this double bond. It can lose this one here form double bond and you notice I put the arrow head there in the middle of the because they're going to share that double bond there now that if we look at the structure will give us this or get rid of that it can lose that hydrogen to form a double bond now if we look at this it actually gives us this as well because all we're doing we're turning that round 
to give us that. So it's the same thing because these can actually turn around these bonds. So just imagine it flapping around like a just flipping a, a lollipop stick or something around, you know. So that will give you give us this compound. Okay. Get rid of that and that. If we lose this hydrogen. You notice as well, I never mentioned before, but the electrons go into these two carbons. You're taking electrons away from that hydrogen, so that gives H plus. And that conserves the charge as well. So you start off with something positively charged, and something that leaves that becomes positively charged. You're not going to get two positively charged things. If that leaves there, that hydrogen leaves, that goes in there, that will give us this product here because you'll have a double bond here. And just to make it a little bit easier, I'll just number these and you can see where I'm coming from. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll just try and label this up because these diagrams, although they're great for organic chemists who've been doing it for many years, if you're just learning them, it can be a bit tricky. So I'll just, so that's one, two, three, Four, five, six, and same again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and there we are. So as you can see, if you lose the one on H four, you get a double bond between two and four. Two and four there. Two and four there. Um, and the reason CSF has a rule is because the compound that you do get in the end is the one which is most substituted and that means it's got the most amount of carbons around it. Now I won't go into the details of that, I'll just mention the word hyperconjugation because that hyperconjugation Hyperconjugation is a word you might come across, but if you're just practicing and you're just learning organic chemistry, I recommend you don't look that up just yet. Um, and all you need to remember is that you get the most substituted double bond. So in this case, we've got one, two, three carbons around that double bond. The maximum you can have is four because there's only one double bond there. If we look at this one, We've got one, two, and these here are actually hydrogens. So I've drawn, if I draw it all, every atom that's present, then you've got hydrogens there, and they don't count. Only carbons count. So Seth rule states that the predominant product will be the one with the most substituted double bond, and that's what we've got here. This is the most substituted double bond, and it's all to do. With this little fella here but I'll save that for another tutorial. So that in a nutshell is Markovnikov edition and Sersef rule.